what's up guys we're here welcome back to the channel we got one day left until season 28 starts and i'm so excited so i'm bringing a couple more build videos for you guys leading up we got a couple monks left and then like a bar video that i'm going to be bringing you but today we are going to be talking about patterns of justice poj spinny stick okay tempest rush this is the build that you're going to have your hatred's gift for the monk if you are playing monk it's going to be a great farming build it's going to be very good at uh pushing gr 150s and it's going to be it's not going to be the best farming build for monk because i think that's in us so check out that video uh but patterns of justice is going to be really good and i'm actually really impressed with the build so let's go over everything that you need and how to play it so you're gonna need five of the six pieces for Pattern of Justice. You get the two set bonus where Sweeping Wing gains the effect of every rune, increasing movement speed by 5% for each stack, which is awesome. Four piece is Attacking with Tempest Rush, reduces your damage taken by 50% and increases Spirit Generation by 50. This is huge because the only thing that we're gonna be attacking with is Tempest Rush. Spin to win, baby. Six set piece is hitting with Tempest Rush while Sweeping Wing is active, increases the size of Sweeping Wind, and also increases all damage by 20,000%. It used to not be 20k, but they changed it, so this got a huge buff. We've combined this with the Captain Crimson set for not only damage reduction, but damage increase based on our cooldowns, and we need those and resource costs because we're going to be holding this button down the entire time. Okay, so now, uh, the extra pieces. So we got Scorch Necklace for double damage, Obsidian Ring for cooldown, and then we have Convention of Elements for more damage, which is really good. And then we have Caesar's Memento. This is a must need. Enemies take a way increased amount of damage for Tempest Rust for five seconds after you hit them with a blind, freeze, or stun. I'll get into how they're, uh, they're frozen or stunned in a second. Okay, then of course, with the two weapons here, one you're definitely gonna need is the One Kom Lao. Hitting with Tempest Rush will activate Cyclone Strike and both deal increased damage. And then I chose to go with Echoing Fury. That way, while we're spinning around hitting things, we're gonna be able to trigger this and get the increased move speed and attack speed, which is really, really awesome. Okay, so we got Emeralds in here, then we got uh, Diamonds in here, and then we got the Topaz for the um, resource cost reduction. Okay, our legendary gems are gonna be Taegook for more damage and armor. I'm going, uh, of course, Bane of the Trap for more damage, and then I'm choosing to go with Gogok of Swiftness, okay? I like this for the attack speed, the dodge chance, and then cooldown, so that way we can always keep these two things, our Serenity and our Epiphany, popped at all times, and it allows us to dash with Dashing Strike all over the map if we need to. Now, this gem, you can definitely swap it out. You could run Bane of the Powerful for more damage. You could run Molten Beast gizzard to help keep um squirts necklace up but i think with all of the dodge chance and everything and how much damage we're going to be doing you're going to be able to keep this up regardless but if you do feel squishy i definitely suggest molten beast gizzard into our cube guys we got balance must need the damage of tempest rush is increased by 600 percent and then when you are hitting three or fewer enemies you get a hundred percent crit chance uh, mantle of channeling while we're channeling tempest rush we get 25 percent increased damage and take 25 percent reduced damage and then of course ring of royal grandor to pair the two sets into our skills and passives guys this is where we'll get the breakdown of season's momento so we have cyclone strike wall of wind so wall of wind enemies are frozen for a second and a half after being pulled in so every single time and remember our patterns of justice is automatically going to be casting um, or excuse me, um, Wind Come Lao is automatically going to be activating Cyclone Strike. So all we have to do is hold Tempest Rush, it activates Cyclone Strike, which is going to freeze our enemies and after pulling them in, which will trigger our Caesar's Memento for increased damage. So that's why we have that. Then, of course, Tempest Rush Flurry. Um, after you stop channeling Tempest Rush, you create an Icy Blast, which is fine. All this is cold damage. We have Dashing Strike, uh, Way of the Falling Star for increased movement. Uh, serenity ascension to be basically immortal and then we have desert shroud epiphany for the damage reduction and spirit regen and then of course sweeping wind inner storm so our vortex is bigger and we gain eight uh spirit per second okay so the only thing we're really spending it on is tempest rush although we do use these but those are negligible compared to how much we're channeling into our passives relentless assault we'll deal 20 percent more damage against blind frozen or stun which we're gonna have frozen enemies Seize the initiative for more damage and attack speed. And then we have Beacon of Utah for more cooldown. 
and then the guardian's path the dual wielding part so as we're dual wielding which we are with both of our weapons we have 35 percent increased dodge chance uh, from all incoming attacks now if you were using a two-handed you get the spirit regen but we want the dodge chance so that is the build guys let's get into our uh stat priority breakdowns so for the helm you're going to want dex crit chance tempest rush shoulders you want dex all resist cooldown resource cost reduction our uh gloves you want dex crit crit cooldown although we would probably swap out dex for resource cost in our chest you want dex vit all resist in our squirts you want cold damage crit crit our bracers cold damage dex armor crit chance our belt you want dex vit life and then instead of regenerate uh life per second that needs to be armor in our pants you want dex vit all resist uh in our boots you want dex vit armor tempest rush damage in our ring you want attack speed crit chance cooldown in uh convention of elements you want dex crit crit but if you can get dex change to like cold damage or something that'd be great uh in our offhand you want lightning damage lightning damage deals 15 percent more dex vit area damage and then in our echoing fury damage damage dex attack speed uh if you could swap this out swap vitality out and get cooldown that would be really really good okay so that's our stat priorities guys we're gonna go in and rocket g90 you can do pretty much sub two or excuse, excuse me uh sub two minutes in gr 90s the build plays really simple as soon as we get in we're gonna activate sweeping wind we're gonna dash towards the first enemy we're gonna activate uh serenity and then we're all we're gonna do is just channel tempest rush and then keep these up at all times the build is very easy to play and very fun so let's get in here and knock this out get this rolling and that's all you got to do this is it this is the entire build and I know we just came off a really big uh, season of spinning to winning, but for PLJ not being a monk build for so long and like nobody using it, the big buff to this is just fantastic. I mean, being able to spin to win and just, <laughs> just destroy people is just insane. I really enjoy the build. It's super fun to play. Oh, nice. We got power pylon. So it's... It's a casual sit back, Netflix and chill, just kind of hang out and destroy things. Now I will say this is your Hadrix gift guys. So you're gonna be able to farm with this pretty good until you get your Inneset. And then I would recommend when you have your Inneset to use that for uh, all of your farming for stuff for like LOD wave of light for the monk and anything else that you need only because the inner monk is just faster. Being able to teleport as much as you can um, but although this one is pretty good, like you can teleport pretty pretty much anywhere with this with our cooldowns. And, um, you know, being able to just bounce around like this. So pick your poison. Um, if I was playing Monk this season, I would definitely be doing PLJ just because it's something different. Because we had, what, four seasons of in a Monk just, you know, being at the top of the ladder. So it's nice to play something different that's really strong. So that's what I would do if I was a monk player. But again, guys, that's totally up to you. And you can see we're just just like blazing through this. You can manually cast um, Cyclone Strike if you want, but you can see how it just cast the tornadoes there, which is really cool. And then when you get to the Rift Guardian, it's pretty easy. You just knock him out, no problem. The single target damage I thought might have been a worry, but it's really not, guys. And you just absolutely dominate. It's it's such a cool and fun build. And there's nothing to it. It gears very easily. And boom, sub two minutes, guys, for POJ. Not a problem at all. So this build is very, very strong, guys. You can definitely swap up a few things if you'd like, as far as weapon, gems, maybe a few passives. But overall, the build is just fantastic. And it's being the Hedrick's gift, so you can use this to farm up everything that you need. So if you guys enjoyed the, today's video, make sure to drop a like. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.